Hi, I'm John Hawkins and today Mike Frazier is joining me and we're bringing a training video that we've done for multiple times at a rotator school. And uh, you know, Tom and I take experiences from other towers in order to take some of the concepts that we do when we're at rotator school and we do our four to five casuals at the end of each day. And this was one of them. This is one that came from Texas Towing from us 12 years maybe ago and we've showed this just about every rotator school and lo and behold just last three or four months ago in Indianapolis this very incident happened and Paddocks and Curtis uh, went and did the recovery working as two separate companies in unison to bring this casualty out of a ravine. And what we have here is a tractor trailer you're using a tanker in this situation which is what actually happened with Texas Towing Driver falls asleep, goes down the median, runs into a ravine, a creek, or a river, and there you have the tractor and the trailer down, loaded some 40, 50, 60, whatever feet below you. So we're going to show you how to get this up, and you're going to do it in two different pieces. We're going to go back and show you some of the training videos that we've done and with the flyover, as well as still, as well as some of the actual footage that was taken from the, the uh, Curtis and Paddock recovery they did just several months ago. And we're going to go and talk a little bit about what you do in this situation because the setup is really what is the critical part. How to take that load off the boom, how to not reach out so far, and where you want to run these chains in order to allow yourself because we're going to travel with this unit right between these two 1075s. So, let's take some time, just walk over here to the front, we'll go to the rear and we kind of talk about what we're doing. We're going to work off the kingpin and talk about what we do up front. Common sense would be, right out of the get-go, you would go back here to the landing gear to try to do your lift points. By moving back from the landing gear, you've come some eight feet further back from where you are to the kingpin. By running eight more feet back here, that's about 12 more feet of boom extension. You don't want that. That's just more of a lever that's going to get you unstable and take away the reach that your recovery boom is needed during this actual lift. So what we've done is we've come right up here to the kingpin. We've attached this kingpin towing plate. Taking the tow plate, instead of going to the tow truck, we're actually going to go rearward. So we're going to take this, we're going to take our 3 h chains, come back to the screw pin shackle. We're going to tighten that up with our screw binder here, making sure these chains are stiff on each side. And we're going to take our screw shackles and we're going to take our straps. And again, we're moving that pick point some eight feet forward. And just as a safety procedure to make sure it does not slip off for whatever reason, that's the reason why we've taken this screw pin here in the shackle and put it in there to keep that movement away from that fifth wheel plate for any unknown reason. Protection, very, very important when you're dealing with a tanker like this or a container or anything where the edges can be sharp, we're going back to that fire hose. So we're coming in here, we're going to protect us all the way around, all the sharp corners, not knowing what we're going to find on the other side. So this is the very critical part. We are only some three feet back. We've reduced the overhang of that recovery boom, just like we like to see you reduce the overhang of your underlift. And now we'll go and we'll work to the back. Now we're coming back here to the rear. And what we want to do is we want to use the actual suspension of the vehicle itself. Want to go ahead and chain this suspension into the, the track system just to make sure that your hardware is staying tight. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to take one 20 foot half inch alloy chain and we're just going to make a loop around the suspension after checking all of our hardware. And we're going to go and take that loop and we're going to keep our chain very short. The main thing is, is we do not want the hardware, since we're dealing with this tanker, getting into that stainless steel wrap of the tank for any reason. Just don't need to cause damage if damage isn't there. And so that strap is going to be short chained up there and again we're going to use that fire hose to protect it because we don't know what's going to be sharp on the other end which you will see we start coming up we do have some sharp edges over in in the walk rail up there so it's very important again what we've done coming from that rear bumper 
just halfway into the suspension group in here, our overhang is only some three feet. And again, just like in the underlift, the more that you're going forward, the more that you're going to have a longer lever in that recovery boom, which is going to take away from the stability or either, either having enough height. And we're going to talk about height because this trailer, if it was a container, can be 13 feet tall when it's on the tires standing in the upright position. But when it's on its side, it's only 96 inches or eight feet or five foot less. So we can make a decision as to when we make this lift and we're gonna go between these two units, do we leave it on its side where it's only eight feet in overall height compared to doing the barrel roll here and then have to go over the back of the trucks where it's 13. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. The placement of the booms are very, very critical. There's going to be times during this recovery that Mike will be going the opposite way that I will in order to always keep the cables hanging straight. That's the critical part here. You don't ever want the cable getting out like this as we're trying to rotate that recovery boom. The boom will tell you, the cables will tell you what you have to do, pay attention to that. And always work together. And having that wireless controller, you all can be very close, either in sight vision or talking range or having your headsets, always work together. That's a good part about having the wireless controller on this uh, particular type of lift right here. And remember, this is a lift where we kind of get out of our norm. Remember, this is down in a ravine. So 20, 30, 40, 60, whatever it is feet, we're lifting this vehicle up. It's going to be a lot more higher than just clearing the outrigger sitting on the interstate. So stability is the critical thing. Always think if this is a bus, where's the engine? What's gonna be the first part of the weight that we're gonna to want to go through here so that we're moving less weight in between the two units and therefore adding the stability? You cannot have an outrigger start to lift when you're doing a lift of this type of height, six feet, eight feet, 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet. You know this truck has to be planted. Don't take any chances. If you notice over my head, you can see that both of those cables are almost the identical angle. Next thing is, is we want to center that hook, not so much into the trailer, but where we think, where we think, because in the side of the trailer, we know, not know where the load is, but try to see where that load is going to be and try to find that center pick. Now we've got two wreckers on here. One of the things that we're gonna do is one wrecker is going to tighten up one of his cables first and then the other one and just get it a little bit off of the ground. The second wrecker is going to be the wrecker that's gonna find center of gravity and therefore you wanna be very careful. So as you tighten up the one cable, don't lift it off the ground, bring the other cable up, very slowly take the load off what's laying on the ground and why it's still touching the ground, the tire, the side of the trailer, in this case the tank, it will all of a sudden move, allowing that ground to be so-called the brake. And it takes away that pendulum, that swing action, which can unstabilize your record. Always use that, very slowly. One wrecker picks up the load just a little bit. The other one starts to pick the load one cable at a time without taking the load totally off the ground and then bringing it up. And we're gonna show you that in this video. And now we can see that he's got it up in the air on the one end. I'm gonna now just a little bit and then I'm just gonna take one cable at a time. Just kind of see, and you're going to watch the rear end. It's going to swing a little bit. All right, now we're just now the other cable. And all we're doing is trying to get that center. Let the ground be our friction. See it coming to me? There it is. A little bit. Finding that center. Finding that center. And hopefully when she comes up, it's a straight lift. And there we go, straight lift. 
All right, let's take it on up. And a couple of things you want to do as you're getting ready to make the actual lift, which is what you're, we showed you finding that center of gravity, is in the recovery that was done in Indianapolis, the accident actually happened very early in the morning, about 5.30. And the lift and everything and all the readiness, it didn't really start until around 4 o'clock that afternoon. And the traffic was actually going in a different pattern than where it happened in the morning. So they wanted to move it over to one other side of the interstate and drug it over there so when they actually did the lift, they were in that non-travel location, whether it be in eastbound or westbound, everybody leaving town on the westbound, they moved it over to the eastbound side. So I think of it out of the box when you're doing like that. The next thing is, is you want to make sure that once it gets up there, what are you going to do with it? Am I going to have another tractor sitting there and wait with it? A lot of the times in both of the accidents that we've seen, the tractor and the trailer were actually upright. In the case with what happened in Indianapolis, the tractor was destroyed. The trailer was not. So um, it's look at those things as you're doing it. Make sure that you got that point that once you get it up there, not only getting the, the casualty centered and everything, you have a plan up on top in order to minimize that time that you're executing that plan. All right, we're going to go on with the lift and show you what we're doing. And we're just going to use both of the winches on both of the trucks. Very, very important that we don't see one of the, the winches get loose or uh, one of both on it, both the trucks to stay tight. Our shiv heads are directly over the center. And you can see where that strap is, where it would fall right on that torn piece of the aluminum. So that's why that fire hose is right there to protect it. We're just gonna get our height using the cables. Now, just like in doing a recovery boom, just like in doing your underlift, Tom and I were always talking about make sure you have enough space. Always position these swedges. You do not want that cable running out of room as you get here. We need enough height to clear the back of these wreckers. So it's very important that we don't run out of cable in order to achieve that goal. And remember, we're always trying to lift with our winches. Now we're going to want to take a leader. Who's going to go first? We got a 48, 50 foot tanker here and we've taken 75% of that distance and that's where we place the tailboards of these two trucks because we do not want the cables pulling apart. That is absolutely critical. You would think that you would want to use the space to sit there and try to make that lift by having the trucks close to each other and that's not the case. We don't want the cables pulling on each other, so we're going to put that, the two wreckers 75% apart from what the overall length of the trailer is. Mike's going to take the lead, so he's going to go first, and he's going to mo start moving his tr uh, the fifth wheel side over the truck. I'm actually going to come my way, so we're not going to pull on his cables. Always want the cables going straight down. That's very critical. Mike. You can see now his cables are almost perfectly straight. And now I'm going to start taking mine. I'm going to start following him. And I'm going to walk with the load. 
so I can make sure those cables are staying right centered up. Slow down, Mike. And this is where we're talking about getting on the opposite side. You see how far Mike's starting to swing out there? That's when you want to take a look at where's your weight. You would have thought about this uh, earlier on so that if you had a real heavy point, the swing is going to be a lot less on this tailboard when I come around because it's going to end up being parallel with the truck on the casualty. Now I notice this cable just start getting loose. That means we're going past center. And I can start retracting my boom in so it stays close to the wrecker. Mike can be doing the same thing. And that flees it right next, nice close to the outrigger, staying out of the lane of traffic. Now always trying to keep everything level as we're doing this. All right, we're right there. Let's hold it right there. Now we're going to sit there and we're going to go out with the, I'm going to go out with the blue and in with the white. Mike's going to be a little bit reversed. And we're going to count to three. And we're going to start. One, two, three. And remember, we talked about the overall height. Container, you know, would be 13 feet tall. Depending on the dolly, it could be even more. But on its side, it's only 8 feet. So it was a lot easier to go over the back of the units do our barrel roll here. Now always being together, we're staying together, we're watching what we're doing together. And remember, in both of the cases with Texas towing and, and uh, what was done in in Indianapolis, they brought that trailer up loaded. And in the pictures that we'll show you, they were pretty sharp how they set the spreader bar because the lift was to keep the side of their, their trailer from crushing. They actually brought it up on its, with the, the wheels down to the ground. And that, therefore, they were able to do that. So it's always studying your pick before you actually make it. Now that we're ready, we're gonna count to three. One, two, three, down with both cables and go even. Again, always watching your cables. They're the ones that are going to tell you if you're getting out of sync. I want to take the time to thank uh, two Illinois towers here for letting them use their new 1075s. Maggio's out of Rockford, Illinois, and of course O'Hare's out of Chicago. And uh, they were kind enough to let us use this uh, for this demo presentation. I thought having two Illinois folks working together, that might set precedence. It's coming down for that landing. This would where you'd have that truck available if the truck was, you know, your trailer was uh, capable of rolling off the scene, tires were all inflated and everything, clearing that scene, and the next time going in after the tractor. There we go. I want to thank Mike again for helping me, you know, do this recovery and show you guys. And remember, this is a particular lift where we're looking at lifting that weight higher than what we're normally doing, four, five, six, seven, eight feet in the air. 
really have to know that there are your two recovery trucks in this situation. One are working together, you're paying attention on that point, and those outriggers are firmly planted. Other thing I'd like to say is, being from Chattanooga, Tennessee, I want to say that without some of the local towers here, both the Yates family, Doug and Guy, we wouldn't be able to take and have these opportunities to get these casualties and be able to do this. So we really want to say thanks to them for their support to the Miller product and allowing us to store our casualties and use their facilities from time to time to make these videos for you. And thank you guys for watching and always remember to subscribe to our news feed. Staying up with the latest tips and tricks. Miller Industries, the world leader in towing and recovery equipment. This video is for product demonstration purposes only and is not intended for training or instructional purposes. Situations vary and operators should rely on their own professional knowledge and safety procedures when conducting actual recoveries.